Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. This is the Politics in Hawaii series. Many people assume that Hawaii is a blue state. Many people believe that we are a true blue state, one of the bluest in our whole nation. Um, I'm not entirely sure that's true, and I think that there is room uh, for that discussion. Um, it's no secret at this point that I, this year, ran for, uh, for office. I ran for state senate. I did not win. Um, however, the interesting thing there is there were a little over 17,000 registered voters. Of those 17,000 registered voters, just over 6,000 actually voted. Okay. Um, add to that, in the entire district, there were about 1,400 registered Democrats, of which I am a Democrat. Um, interestingly, again, 6,000 people voted already, so what are they? Are they independent? Are they Republican? Are they undeclared? What does that mean? So that's part of the analysis. This isn't the reason for the topic as far as me running, but it's an interesting topic as you go from district to district, island to island. What actually are we? Are we really more purple, like many other states are much more purple? Uh, so to talk about this with me, very important guest today, is uh, Mr. Tony Gill. He is a labor relations attorney, and he has served in many, many uh, uh, ways uh, to benefit this question, uh, to advance this question, as well as uh, work within uh, politics throughout many, many years. And we'll hear more about that from him in a second. Welcome to the show, Mr. Tony Gill. Hi. Glad to be here. Excellent. So, okay. First, first of all, tell us a little bit about you and politics and what you do and what got you to be a labor relations attorney and involved in politics in Hawaii? Well, what made me a Democrat was, I guess that was my mother's second question. <laughs> Your mother's second question. <laughs> yes, doctor, but is he a Democrat? <laughs> right. um, that was given. Uh, people okay. who know the history of my family know that it was not likely to turn out another way. Uh, I'm one of the generation, I guess, that can still remember the revolution of 54, although I remember it as a child. Yes. Uh, I had my little crew cut, and there was lots of golden rain coming down all the time at all the rallies, which I figured out later was beer, and there was a lot of beer and <laughs> sawdust. I can tell you about that. Um, but my family was politically involved and remains politically involved to this day, so it was a natural course for me. Sure. And my father was a labor relations attorney, and I succeeded to the firm. So uh, we have a practice now, and I do work for Democrats from time to time as uh, a sideline, you might say. As a sideline. Uh, so as a labor relations attorney, what, aside from, I guess, party politics, what sorts of things do you do? What are the, what, what are the sorts of cases that you take on? Uh, my firm focuses on representation of labor unions. Okay. So we've represented a number over the years. Uh, current clients include the professors and nurses. Uh, we've had a variety of construction unions, sometimes in the distant past teachers and so forth. So I have a, a kind of a public sector and private sector bridge there. Got it. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of arbitrations and the things that come with labor union representation. Okay. So yeah. you still represent largely Democrats then <laughs> when it comes to unions? Generally, you, you would say. Yeah, yeah, sure. Generally, you would say, but not exclusively. That's another big thing as far as Hawaii is concerned is the unions and the role that unions play. Um, Nationally, uh, I, I won't get into the big history of unions at the moment. That's not what we're talking about. But it's just an interesting facet here, how large of a player unions are uh, with campaigns. In particular, um, during the campaigns, it's really the unions that, and the union members that spend more time out sign waving and, and door knocking than almost anyone else, uh, uh, for, for, certainly with some campaigns. So anyway, um, OK, well, great. Um, OK. You have also served, as far as the Democratic Party is concerned, you have been uh, Oahu County Chair. That's right. I've been a number of subordinate positions to Oahu County mm, Chair over the years mm -hmm. uh, and was elected three times. I had to step down on a number of occasions for other assignments, but I've been Oahu County Chair, which makes me, uh, in that capacity, uh, responsible for the grassroots organization on the island. Um, I did run for state party chair, but due to the wisdom of the convention, I was relieved of that opportunity. Uh, 
it's always fascinating the the different factions that exist. So there's well, always there's always groups, and then within those groups there are smaller groups. And well, I thank them. How I thank them. It would have been two years of uh, washing dishes for fifty thousand people <laughs> for no pay and no thanks. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. Absolutely. Um, but instead, uh, yes, we uh, we we had a different chair, and now we even have a new chair, uh, Mr. Indeed, Tim Vandiver. Yeah. Um, that's just how that goes. So, okay. Um, one of the things, and uh, more germane to the topic here, uh, one of the things that you've been working on uh, is this idea of of party politics, of succession plan. I'll, I'll, I'll add that in, but really more when it comes to the elections and primary elections, and whether our, our our primaries are open or closed. And there's a history around that, and there are some challenges to that. So I wanted to talk a bit about that. And, and hopefully learn from you what you have done, what you have learned, and, and, and where we are in that conversation at the moment. Well, that's a big bite, so I'll try to shorten we'll, we'll it piece a bit for, for you. We'll yeah, piece right. for you. I know you have a historical background. So the, the thing to recognize first off is that the, most people, and you were talking about red and blue and what color is this state, I think most people are just blank. Yeah. Where most people don't vote at all. That so seems to be clear. They're obviously not your viewers. Right. But <laughs> all those people out there, the over half of them that don't bother to vote, they're essentially useless to the system. They're dead weight. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And they don't understand but what citizenship is about, or they think that citizenship is really a consumer concept, which it's not. A citizen is different because a citizen stands up and addresses issues publicly with a voice. Right. But that's the key thing you have to understand is that citizens, be they uh, left, right, or center, want to be heard, to participate, and to involve themselves with other like-minded people in hope of generating an electoral majority somehow. That's what a citizen does. That's what an active citizen. Well, a real citizen. Okay. The other ones are basically useless, and they'll get what they deserve. <laughs> so if you take the 50% of the people or less, who bother to participate or register even, then you have yet a subset of those who turn out to vote. Right. So that to use very sloppy math, three quarters of the people don't play in the game. That's definitely true in this last election. I think we had about um, almost three quarters, about 30%, about 32% at most actually voted. It varies up and down according to the enthusiasm well, of the moment. And another way to look at that is it was 32% of the registered voters. Yes. Voted. Yes. So it's a smaller number when you look at the total population. Correct. Yeah. All right. So it's a, it's a discouraging picture. So it if, really is. if you say, is this a red or a blue state? Well, it's mostly pale. It's mostly pale when you look oh. at it from that perspective. From, from that perspective. As far as the people who vote. Yeah. The ones who actually vote seem to lean, we'll call it lean blue. Yes, they seem to lean blue. They do seem to lean blue. But what that means in practical operational terms is really up for question, which is why I suppose you induced me to come down here and sit yes. in front of the green screen. Yes. Okay. So no, 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 it's the capital. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the problem that we have in the state of Hawaii now is that people fail to understand that a primary election and a general election to serve two completely different purposes. Okay. They are blurred together in the common mind. Oh, it's an election, but they're not the same. The general election is to select the person who will represent. Okay. The primary election is to determine who the parties will nominate. Okay. Okay. So big, that's, a, big that's an important distinction, again, for the number of people that aren't as engaged in politics, local or otherwise. It's, a, it's an important distinction to understand. Yeah. That. There's yes. one election which is preceded by a nomination. Right. Now notice, okay, I understand we just elected a new president. Somebody told me this. I, I heard about it. What the parties do in this state is they caucus to determine who their nominee shall be. Right. You did not go to any primary election to nominate any president. No, you did not. We, we held a presidential preference poll. Yes. If you were a Democrat, you went to the Democrat one and the Republicans have thought that this is a good thing, and now they have one, too. And uh, I don't know their exact procedure, but it's similar. I'm sure it's and similar. so without there being any vote taken among the general public at all, 
the parties nominated their nominee for the highest office in the land. All right, and in Hawaii, that's this the only year, one. Yeah, yeah uh, this year in Hawaii, that nominee would happen to be, uh, percentage-wise, Bernie Sanders. Indeed. As far as the presidential preference poll was concerned. Indeed. And that is relevant because that chooses the delegates that then go to the electoral college, big convention, the electoral college, and the big convention, and the, and the convention. convention. Yeah. So that's how, I guess that's, that's good to see how that stuff works as well. So uh, each step, being a Democrat, first of all, you have to be a registered Democrat, first of all, in order to yeah. participate in the presidential preference okay. poll. Yeah. Here's, a, here's the key fact, and then we'll get into why the primary election is, in my view, odd. Okay. Okay. Um, when you go to a Democratic caucus or a Republican uh, equivalent of it, and you participate in selecting a nominee, it seems perfectly normal that you should be a Democrat or a Republican or whatever party. Yes. Because after all, the Democrats are deciding who they wish to nominate. For their party. For their, for their party. party's interest based on their party's platform. Yeah. yeah. And that's perfectly acceptable for a president. Mm -hmm. It's illegal for every other office in the state. It's illegal to do it that way for every other office in this state. Yes. Is it that way in all states? No. Or, so there are some states that do it the same no, way. We, we are an open primary state. An open primary state. Which means that everyone, regardless of party affiliation, can pull any ballot and pretend to be a nominator of that party's candidates. For our... For, within the bounds of our state. For our state... State office. Primary elections. Yes, correct. Yes. Right. And that would include uh, that would include uh, city council, which is nonpartisan technically, um, although that's very blurred. Uh, House, Senate, and governor. Right. And lieutenant governor that gets right. elected separately. Right. Okay. So when it comes to all of those seats, it's an open primary. So right. anybody that decides they want to show up and vote in the primary can show up and pull whatever card they want. I'm going to pull the Democratic card because, well, I did last time. And because it's Tuesday. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, so, so they'll choose that. Now, they don't have to be, and this is the question, they don't have to be registered Democrats. No, they, they don't. Could, could, did, does anybody care if they're registered to anything? Nobody can know. Nobody can know. It's illegal for anybody to know. So therefore, <clears throat> it is very possible, if not likely, that given the way the state of Hawaii works, we have a majority of Democratic candidates, Republicans show up to vote in our in, oh, and, and, pull, and pull the Democratic certainly card. Certainly they do. Of course they do. Okay, so that seems like that is contrary to what the intent, I, I'll say, could be. Well, no, it is, a, it is a specific intent of the law to drive parties underground okay. or to make it impossible for anyone to know who is nominating the candidates of a party. That was the purpose of the 1978 CONCON, is to make it impossible for anyone to know Why? what party affiliation you are when you pull a ballot and do the nominating. Why was that decided? Uh, there are several reasons. Uh, there were the, the cover story was it was in the post-Watergate era and everybody was afraid of Big Brother. And so nobody wanted government snooping on your political identity. Okay. In my judgment, the real purpose was to make parties less partisan. And it has succeeded. Oh, it's definitely succeeded. It succeeded. Yes. Which goes back to your question about is this a blue state yeah. or other? Yeah. We appear to be a blue state. We but, appear to be a blue state. But, but when based you, on this, and especially in my race, yeah. in my race, yeah. it, was, uh, it was a primary race. Yeah. I ran against the incumbent. The incumbent won. But, however, the number of votes I went through already... That was that election ended in August, and there was not a general after that because no Republican, no Independent, no one else decided to run for that. So that ended. That election ended. Sure. August eighth. Yeah. So therefore, whoever voted, Democrat, Republican, Independent, I don't care, voted for that seat on August eighth. Yes. So therefore, necessarily, well, not necessarily. Non-Democrats definitely voted in that race and in other races. It's not, all, all it's not about time. me. It's not about me. All the time. All of the time. All right. So therefore, 
That's interesting. Okay. It, it has we, to we have be to take so. a quick break. We have to take sure, a quick sure. break, and we're going to come back and dive more into this because this I think there's a lot to this and something to really understand. So, thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers: The Politics in Hawaii series. Thank you again to my guest, Mr. Tony Gill. We'll be back in one minute. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week, all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time. Do what's fun and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. Welcome once again, our guest, Mr. Tony Gill. Okay, so we were just talking about the, the, the primary election here in Hawaii that, that, that elects ultimately uh, our, well, our... it nominates candidates. That nominates can, well, it nominates candidates, and it can elect, but okay, it nominates candidates to run in the general. So it's understanding that, first of all, okay, the primary is to select the nominee who's then going to run in the general if there is uh, opposition. So we have different ballots. We've got the Republican ballot. We have the Democratic ballot. We have independent ballot. We have however many others there are. Sure. Uh, people go into the booth, and they pick whatever ballot, and they vote. Necessarily, because of the way the law is written, no one can know and no one does know what affiliation you are, unless they happen to know you, yeah. before you go in there. And it doesn't matter what affiliation you are, you vote for whoever you feel like voting for. Look, you're a Democrat, I'm a Democrat, mm -hmm. we're ardent Democrats. Mm -hmm. We have no more right to nominate the Democratic nominee of the Democratic Party than the person, my evil twin, who's done nothing but contribute money to the most arch-right or regressive candidates and has done nothing but organize against the Democrats. My evil twin and I have the same vote in nominating the Democratic nominee as you or anybody else does. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with it, because normally you and I can arrange that let's work together. And we say, what about him and her? Well, bring them in. Let's work together and elect somebody. That's a baby political party. Mm -hmm. What the state of Hawaii says is, no, you cannot you and I and he and uh, she cannot create our own nominee. Everyone must participate in creating our nominee. And therefore, there's no way to tell what a Democrat stands for, as opposed to the general population. And this is why, coming back to your first point, it's very tough to tell that this is really a blue state. Yeah. Because in the early statehood days, the Democrats rose to power, but they weren't all dominant by any means. There were numerous examples of strong Republican constituencies of, up till relatively recently, historically. It all flipped eventually, so that now we have a wholly Democrat-dominated legislature because the Democratic Party has absorbed the Republican Party. That, and that's the thing. We have, um, this is a concept that I've been asking about for a couple of years now. In the Democratic Party, we have the big tent theory. And the minute I heard that, I said, wait, big tent theory means we're going to welcome in anybody who wants to call themselves a Democrat? We are wide open to be infiltrated. We are wide open to have anybody else with whatever their real agenda is come in and pretend that they're a Democrat, run as a Democrat, win as a Democrat, but never actually agree with what our platform is, even 50% of our platform. Correct. And that's what we have right now. There are Correct. a number, and without calling out names, people have different opinions on it anyway. Well, there are people who have various degrees of agreement with what the Democratic platform is who call themselves Democrats. Yeah, no, so we're in the era of the individual political entrepreneur. Yes. This is because the parties 
uh, under modern election law, no longer control any funding, really. Right. They control a little bit, but not anything significant. Right. If you have outside funding, you're golden. If you have funding from the Koch brothers, you're golden. Whatever. Okay. Right. That funding uh, comes in from a lot of different places. A lot of different yeah. places, not from in here. In a lot of different ways, but yes. Yes, not yes. necessarily from here. So what does the individual political entrepreneur want to do? Get elected. Observing the result, which is now a generation on from the time when parties were fairly distinct, the individual entrepreneur thinks, I should run as a D because my odds are materially better. Yes. So pulls the paper, checks the box, no necessary contact even with the party. You don't have to be a registered Democrat no. to... When you, when you go to the election office and you fill out the paperwork and you pay the amount of money and say, I'm going to run for this race, you say, I'm a Democrat. Yes. But there is no validation or verification no, of that No, the election office says it's not their job. So what, what the party has to do is has to step back and basically run people out, which is a little awkward to do at the 11th hour. That is awkward to do, and it's actually a big thing that we've had to deal with this year. There's a number of, in yes. fact, we had one candidate, and this is fascinating. We had one candidate this year, I will leave her name out of it, who actually ran as a Republican and a Democrat for three different seats. On the same day. On the same day. Yeah, she, well, I, she didn't win any of them. No, but I, I, I have that case. There's no, no, no reason not to mention yeah. Ms. Kai Hui. She, <laughs> she feels that she is entitled to be both a Republican and a Democrat and run as one of each for a similar office on the same day on the same ballot. So, and there are no rules uh, against that, apparently. There are no rules that say, <clears throat> no, you shouldn't. And not in the Office of Elections, but there are party rules. But we're, we're drifting off the point here, which mm -hmm. is that the, the concept of party affiliation is so degraded now that we have lapsed into a one-party includes all system. Yeah. Now, people who object to this tend to be Democrats who believe that the Democratic Party has a particular agenda that should be pushed. It should be validated in the field after explanation of it, and that uh, the Democratic persons, the representatives, should adhere roughly to the Democratic brand. But there's, because the primary election allows everyone to vote, there's no ultimate control over that yeah. nomination. Yeah, and there We've, are no regulations throughout the whole process. Yeah, no, that, yeah. okay. So. So what you had was, you, you had a, a true contest historically between Democratic and Republican cons, uh, perspectives in this state, which over time eroded, and as the Democratic Party absorbed more and more who, pe pe people who in any other state would be Republicans, mm -hmm. um, with fiscal conservative policies, socially conservative policies, and all kinds of other things, uh, then the Democratic Party became truly dominant, but less and less meaningful, Absolutely. ideologically. Yeah, that definitely seems to so be. So that's a problem that we're faced with. Yeah. All right, so in the last few minutes that we have, what, what is being done? What can be done? Um, well, the first thing to do is for people who are interested in this topic to recognize that the primary election system that we have now is functionally identical to the primary election system that obtained during the period of the plantation oligarchy. Okay. It's a historical study you can make on your own time. The Democratic Party, as it rose to power, made as its first article of business, getting rid of the open primary and allowing people to affiliate by, by party for choice of nomination of their own. So how long ago was that? They implemented that finally in 68, and it had a run to about 78 when the CONCON knocked it out. So your, uh, the current, th there's no statutory alternative to what we do now. You'd have to do one of the following things. The Constitution has to change or be struck down to permit uh, traditional that, that primary constitutional that, that was that a constitution that was an, an amendment yeah right yeah. so we can affect that amendment you can do it or the courts could strike it down depending which is a whole other story that probably amendment, not a whole court. constitution the, that amendment the alternative that might work would be a statutory amendment that allowed the parties to do something like what they do with the presidency right 
Yeah, that's possible under existing now, law. Now, what if, uh, so, okay, because it's illegal, we can't do this, but what if we, we it, it would require an act of our state Congress, our state legislators to make a rule change. Is it administrative rule? Does it need to be a bill? Does it have to affect and impact the Constitution to say to the Office of Elections, verify that they are actually a Democrat? No, that would be a statutory change the legislature could make and the governor could sign. That portion of it is purely statutory. Okay. And that would, so therefore, if you're going to run as a Democrat, we can actually ask for that statutory change and that could be done without a constitutional amendment. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to, so the, the, the bigger question there is, how do we make people have to be a Democrat in order to vote for a Democrat? They must be registered. How, okay, we can't force people to register. No, uh, no. That, that's, that's well, part of the thing, you, right? you see, the, the essence of what is called the closed primary is that you register your name publicly as being affiliated with a certain party or perspective, and that's what entitles you to pull that ballot. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't prevent anybody from lying, but you make the registration sufficient that it's not lightly changeable on a whim. Right. So let's say, for example, you must register as a Democrat or Republican well, 90 days before the election or some such number. Right. There are rules like that. There are rules that in are other like that. states. In fact, in fact, well, even here, even here, if you don't, if you don't file or, or if you don't file as a Democrat within within the 90 days prior to the cutoff time, or I think it's 90 days, uh, you have to come before the party and ask, "May I run as a Democrat?" That's as a, uh, to run. Now we're, to run we're confusing the yeah. voter and voter the, and, and running. Yes. Okay, okay, I was okay, getting okay. off crosswise with you. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. okay. Um, the point is that certain kinds of changes would require a constitutional change or a court ruling. Certain kinds of changes can be done by statute, uh, where the legislature enacts and the governor signs. And there are some things that parties can do in, independently to try to uh, sharpen the line. Sure. But uh, without going too far afield, some or at least one of these choices would be required in order to make a material change in the way we do things here now. Well, I, I think it's worth more discussion. Unfortunately, our show is over. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again, Mr. Tony Gill. Uh, thank you to the staff and the crew here at Think Tech Hawaii. My final take on this in the last couple seconds is all I really want is be who you are. If you're a Democrat, be a Democrat. If you're a Republican, have the courage to be a Republican and run based on those values. That would be my take. Rather than hiding behind the veil of, of, of Big Tent and it's the only way my percentages are to win, be what you are and see what comes of that. So that would be my take of that. So again, thank you all. I appreciate it. See you next week. Mahalo.